You know, sometimes you just got to take your whole desk apart. Sometimes, you know, you got to clean your machines up. And if you don't take care of them, then they'll end up not taking care of you. I just finished putting this pie back together. And this is what it actually looks like, just this alone. These are my little mouse uh, and keyboard right here. I got them plugged into here this time to see if I can see if they work. So I don't know if they work yet, but before we have any fun with these ones and zeros we're going to play with, 24 of them, I just wanted to quickly show you what uh, sometimes you got to take your machine apart and clean them. And, and if you look at this cloth, you'll know why. Okay, everybody, after a good day of cleaning all these electronics, Starting, things are starting to look a little bit normal again, but I'm getting ready for the new project. The pie's all back together. The keyboard's just along the side here for now. All my little tweezers ready for them to use. And there's always one thing I always forgot to show. When I'm not too sure how something works, I got a multimeter here. I mostly check for ohms and stuff. I'm not into checking for volts yet, but this is still quite new to me, but if you're gonna have electronics, it's definitely good to have one of these, because some of the features are easy to understand. You just gotta read and study a lot and take your time with something you don't know. Just take your time and research it because electronic mistakes, a lot of them can't be reversible if you really end up burning something out. So it's always good to have this. And that's where I keep it hung up right there on, on the edge of my desk. That way it's always at my ready for me to grab it and it's always a good thing to have. And one thing I always do, ah, I can't show the label. But I always use a can of this Bonnie Amy to clean my electronics. I believe in this stuff. I've been using it for almost 30 years. It works on it. It works on anything that's plastic, anything. It's beautiful. But other than that, everything's all back together, and I'm ready to do the project. Like I said, I'm not. I only got one camera that I'm using that I have no one to help me. So I'm going to be doing these some steps. First, we're going to attach all 24 uh, to 20 ohm resistors. I'm gonna do this all in steps and then show you. Okay, we have our little resistors all, all set up, all 24 to 20 ohm resistors. And if you look carefully, I got them on the negative rail here on this side. And the reason is, instead of having just wires going crazy everywhere, that one rail will power, will power all the resistors up. And that will work one at a time with the shift registers. And this is my little uh, power rail right here. And because of that ground wire, I'm connected to this actual main breadboard here where the pie comes from. And so far this is going to be the setup. And then the next steps will take care of themselves as I go. But as you can see, I got my cordless head keyboard and my cordless mouse already, all ready to go. And this is going to be an interesting project. Hope you guys will like this one. Okay, now we are hooked up to our 74HC5 nine five shift registers all three of them so this whole thing is going to act like one big shift register just like i said in the video before so if you don't if you don't know what i did here watch the other video from before this one where you see me hook up the actual shift registers one by one by one and explain them fully there but for now this here is going to be a 24-bit binary counter and this number is going to kind of count up to seven to sixteen million seven hundred and seventy seven thousand two hundred and fifteen or sixteen and that's what this thing is going to count up to that's a real big number i don't know how many days it'll take to go but hey someone should try it one day but if you want in order to try it you must do everything i showed you here and write down the actual python program to do all this and you'll be able to find out for yourself how many days it would actually take to count this whole entire binary number count all the way to a 24 bit number between three three shift registers 74 hc 595 shift registers i keep forgetting to say the model and i should have said it in better videos but i'm getting i'm learning i'm learning but we're gonna find out what this does so what we're gonna do is I'm just going to push this little uh, button here on my thing and that is your little binary counter and that there is uh, 0 0.5 half a second is what it's actually the lead speed for this I mean it'd be exactly half a second whatever a second is in the actual Python's uh, time sleep command but this is, this is what you see and 
If I was to leave it at this pace, I don't know how many days it would take to count to a great big full bit number, but all the lights will be on once it counts it. And this is how you could make your own binary counter. And I hope that this, uh, this video will help and I'll explain exactly what the program is doing when I get to that part. But this is what you got right here. And it's a simple thing to set up. All you need is 24 uh, uh, 220 ohm resistors, your lights, to, uh, 24 LEDs, and just uh, use your, sh your shift register cords on each LED is all you gotta do. Just like before, going from right to left, going from Q0 to Q7 on each shift register. So there's uh, eight, there's, there's eight times three, which is 24 LEDs on here. And that's what, that's all you gotta remember. Other than that, we're gonna check out now, we're gonna check out to see how the program went. And, and learn about it a bit and then I'll even give you time to copy it down and then I'll actually uh, teach what the program actually is doing in the lines and stuff so you have a better understanding of how to make this Okay, uh, so far this is my Python idle editor. I don't got this in the Raspberry Pi just so the, num the letters are bigger and easier to see even for me. But as you see here, there's hashtags all in front of these words here. There's all these sentences. This is your comments that tell the program or what is the program is doing or the one that's learning about the program what it is doing and it's also good for other programmers should they take over the night shift if, they're, if you're actually working on a project together but this here tells you all the do's and don'ts with electricity and it says no be mindful while working with electronics there are mistakes that cannot be corrected should you ignore any basic electronics rules electronics demands both basic math skills and knowledge of electronics components alike and then right down here, items needed are as follows. You know, you need your Raspberry Pi, you need your breadboard, and one or more depending, which I even have one, I got four of them. One name, one attached, and then I got my 74HC59 shift registers, three of them, 24 LEDs, and 220, 220 ohm resistors, 24 of them, and jumper wires, 32. In, or more. I, I think I got about 40 wires on my uh, on my uh, project right now, so I'm just leaving it like that. But you add what you think, and if you ain't got enough wires, you'll know. If you got too many wires, you'll know. But this is so far. This is what I've done here, and now down here it says note: use two other jumper wires for the Raspberry Pi 4 fan while in use operation. And then down here it says 24-bit binary counter Python program example. This Raspberry Pi Python program allows users to learn all about how binary data bits work with three 8-bit 74HC595 shift registers. And then right here it even tells you what we're going to be doing. We're going to be using the breadboard method, not the BCM. We're using breadboard, which means we're calling the actual pin numbers not by their BCM number, which is a, which would, for example, BCM4 is actually GPIO number seven, a, a pinout. So we're going for the actual breadboard because I'm always told it's a better option to use because it's where the sockets are, the actual socket numbers. So that takes care of that. And then it says here, uh, you can also use the, B, the, the sock channel, which is BCM down here, but we're not using that, but you can if you want. You just got to rename the GPIO pins as the different numbers they are. But it'll still run the same no matter what. And I'm just using the breadboard. But uh, this here is we import our functions to call the GPIO 
uh, breadboard method and uh, um, um, uh, uh, what did I call that again? Uh, the board method, yeah, the board method is right here. And now we got this control set warnings disabled because I got no bugs in my program. So I will disable this anyway because I have no bugs in the program and the dialog box comes on anyway. I don't know why it's made that way, but it's a good thing. Now we got our, to create variables down here for the latch and data bit clocks, clock, and uh, you can rename the variables any name you want, but you have to stick to the names you rename them. And you can use uh, the find command on the Raspberry Pi, control F I believe, and then you can actually replace the words, the variables you want to rename. But it's pretty good, it's a good idea to name them the similar names to what they're called that way people know and other programmers know what they are like latch and data and clock you know it's good to name them similar to the names you need that way you know exactly what you're, you're getting and now down here it says python it says no python executes its programs from the top downward you must place these variables in this correct order as shown these pinout values won't won't execute right if you if you don't. So they will not execute right if I actually change the number values. Doesn't matter what I, about the words here, of course. But if I change the words, I gotta change the other words. But I could have had it saying data and then clock and then latch. But these numbers here have to be in the order they are. If I put the 19 down here, it won't work. And 21 up there, it, it has to be in this order. It's actually in the physical order I placed the pins in the actual shift register. So it came out this way, I'm leaving it. At least it works. That's the way it came out. Now this big number here, boy, it's always been hard for me to say. But the very first for loop is a reverse for loop. It's actually going to be a reverse for loop. And inside the loop itself is where we're going to stick the minus one for the two's complement. I believe it's called a two's complement there. It seems to act like one. But I'll get to that in a minute. But this most significant bit right here, 60,777,215 to 60,777,216 is what this incrementer here does for the first reverse for loop. And then on uh, second for loop the forward for loop we got eight million three hundred and eighty eight thousand six hundred and seven uh, uh, bits that can that, that that can light up as the, the number counts and then as this as its incrementer here it's eight million three hundred and eighty eight thousand six six hundred and eight that's the least significant bits here and everything on on this side so you got the they got the most in a group and then that worked the first for loop and then you got the least here so the, they, they both take two parts of numbers which i'll eventually show you but this is my lead speed here on how i want the duration to be you can have, you can make it any duration you want but i like it on 0.5 it looks like an actual counting mechanism when it's actually there but you can have it go fast slow any way you want all you do is change its value and because I made all these variables here, like you see with speed, and this is the value right here. And this explains what it's doing, pause duration. Well, this here makes it that I can just change the values instead of looking through the entire program to change everything. So it's always great to make variables. Pepper your program as many variables as you can, because it actually makes programming a lot more easier and less redundant on the, on the user's part. And then we got our Actual control shift register or control shift register lock variable uh, latch variable right here Then I got a for loop and what I did was on the same line. I could have had it like this Okay, I could have had it just like this it still works. That's the way It normally be but sometimes I like to take shortcuts and it still works this way. I kept it all on one line so this here is actually going to set up the GPIO ports that we need, that we're using for the actual shift registers. This is gonna set that up. And then this one here will actually turn all the bits to off 
once it's set up. Now it's called the, the ship registers, it knows where the pins are, and I'm plinking them with an eye, I want these bits to stay off and make it look more cleaner and nicer. And starting here is a try. The word try is for the event handler that I want, that I, I want a, a keyboard interrupt uh, control C uh, command in there to allow the user to control C to stop the entire program and clean up the GPIO o pins, turn them all completely off and into anything that's on the that's on the Raspberry Pi that could be active and open. And this here is the for loop, of the reverse for loop, the step minus value one here, reverse for loop, step value minus one. And now this word BIN, this is this is the actual uh, variable, but it's actual it's an actual function too at the same time. This blue denoted by this blue here. So I got a saying bin um, equals uh, this uh, I for the increment of the big numbers that I showed you, the 16 million, and up on top the 16 million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand two hundred two hundred and fifteen and then two hundred sixteen that side on his side here. This is the least significant bit of the incrementer. This is the most insignificant bit of the incrementer. But, um, but uh, what is this? This is the big number to the big number, and this is also the least of the big number. And then down here is where we get our second uh, for loop. Uh, down here we have uh, this for loop within the for loop. I forgot to mention that. That turns all the actual magic ones and zeros on or off. With, the, with the, the variable J, the variable J right here. So um, this is actually incrementing the numbers, and every time this increments on the outside, this loop gets done. This increments again, this loop gets done again, because it's even nested. Now we're going down to this big one here, that's the next bits down, uh, the, the 8 million uh, count bits uh, that are in here. And this is the first part and the second part. And it's a forward loop, and it's got no two, no uh, two complement. It has no minus one here at all. It just counts straight up. And then down here is the actual where I say no. It is recommended that you set up a keyboard interrupt handler to force the GPL pins to return to a low state off. That means after I push Control C, this command will kick in because of the try. You can't have an accept without a try, it will give you an error. So you need to try and you need to have the accept on the same implementation as the try as a try statement. Try function statement, whatever you want to call it. I'd call it a try statement because it hasn't got round brackets. So we'll call it a try statement. And this uh accept handler part here. Now what happens is I mean this I mean this semicolon is where it gets indented and this try block, this uh, try accept block here will, will kick in. And then this will turn the bits off and then kills the entire Pi completely off. Except for the actual power of the Pi, it just turns every all, every pin off. All 40 pins, it'll make sure they're turned off. Even if I didn't put this here, they'd still turn off. But I wanted to do it neat in case I don't want this here and I want to expand the program and then I put it down somewhere else. So I always have something there, so I want to do something else. Let's, let's say with it. And uh, this is pretty much the program here to do a 24-bit count. And if you notice what I did up here, I didn't. You can use uh, underscores to make the numbers look more readable. You can actually use underscores and long numbers. So just a good thing to remember that that way you won't get all mixed up. And uh, if you saw my other videos, you can you can change the numbers to 8 and 16 and 24 if you want. But when you do that, though, then you also got to change this value here to 8-bit, number 8, number 8, number 8, number 8. And then if you want 16, you got to change the value up here to a 16-bit number and down here again, just like you saw in the other videos if you looked at them. And then the same here would be, down here would be 16, 16, and then 16, 16. That way you use the exact bits that you're using. Now, it's okay that if you got 24 lights, and let's say you got all your shift registers active, they're going to repeat the, 
the process all the way along, which I'm going to show you a few things with that as I as I, I uh, show this particular program example of the 24 bits, ones and zeros and uh, how it actually counts. I will show you what you can do within this program to make uh, some pretty funky changes that, uh, that make it even look less boring. But this is the actual program and as you saw before, you can actually get this program on GitHub, on GitHub, on my user profile, on, uh, I'm, I'm under the name Master S one but I also have my real name inside my program, so you'll know it's me. Uh, but you can find anything you want that I've made with the Raspberry Pi since I've had it for about six, seven months now. And I've been steadily at it, trying to learn it. And I've just been trying to treat, teach myself how to use transistors and capacitors, but right now I'm using an ordinary 9-volt battery, so I don't actually hurt my Pi. So I'm still learning electronics. I just... I've been in the computer programming for a very, very long time, but as for electronics, this is totally new to me. I just started doing it uh, this year, and uh, so far I'm really liking it a lot. I wish I had done it earlier in my life, and who knows, maybe one day I'll build a robot. But uh, we are going to continue on with what we're going to make this do. Okay. This is my Pi, my Raspberry Pi, all nice and quiet. Everything's turned off. It's really all nice and quiet, behaving itself. And now we're going to go push this little magic button here. And we're going to watch how the screen actually lights up. As long as you see four little Raspberry Pis, I don't got the, the background saver on the back of my screen. That's why I can see the listing of everything. But as long as I see that, that's a very good sign. If I don't see that, that's a bad sign. That happened to me once when the actual Pi just wouldn't turn on. It just kept rotating and rotating. It was like this black screen, but it wouldn't come on. But it'll take about almost a minute for it to come on. All depending on how much stuff you got in that card. Um, that you put all your stuff on it, including the Raspberry Pi uh, operating system itself. But there's my little logo. I just, I didn't make the logo, but I tricked it up, put one of the zeros behind it, made it look really, really cool. So that's my official logo for this. And it looks like a Windows taskbar almost. It's even got a start button too. And I go like this. See that? Guys, shut down and everything. Just like a Windows, but it's not made by Windows. And on the camera, the screen looks a lot brighter than it actually does in real life. But it's, it's actually pretty good though. Now we open the documents folder. As soon as it opens, there we go. Now we gotta look for 24 bit binary program. 24 bit binary counter, there we go. That was well open like this. Now one thing I didn't I didn't mention the last time is the comments. That they only run they don't run while the program is running. That's only for the programmer's use or the user who's learning the program. That's all these comments are actually for. It's the same program that I, I showed you before, but this is on the actual Rise, Raspberry Pi window. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to change some values here and show you the end results because I'm only one person with a camera so I can't have, I don't have multiple cameras everywhere to be able to fly with my hands and go crazy everywhere and show you guys what I'm doing. But I'm going to be changing some of the values in here to show you guys what I mentioned just a little bit earlier about what this is, what I'm, what I'm going to make these uh, binary digits do. But when I first ever turned the Pi on, it's random lights will come on, as you can see here. Just random bits come on. It's just the power going through the actual uh, positive uh, rail over there. That's what's happening. The three, the, the shift registers are on a three volt rail, and they're just active right away. Until when I run, then when I go like this to the play, to this little play button, when I go like to the play button right like this. Then you'll see a count. The lights turn off like I showed you in the program. 
and it starts counting away. Now we're gonna have some fun, real fun. Okay, I I took out when after I designed this program, which it took me almost two weeks to figure it out, but I designed this program myself. But when I took out the tooth complement that I call this minus one, I'm still not really sure what to call it, but I just call it either a, a, the condomeria of ones and zeros, that's all I call it, because it won't count past any num number other than half the shift register, uh, each one, if, unless I have that in there, and that's what made me find the theory to making this so everybody could actually do it. But watch this though, now when I took it out, the bits count normal, but they'll invert count. Notice that, it's still counting, but instead of the bits being on, they're counting as off, and everything else is on. Isn't that cool? Now I'm gonna show you something else that's pretty fascinating. Okay, if you remember, in the last loop, in the last loop, see this uh, little 4J four, four, uh, four range? That was 24, but I made it be a 23 with a comma minus one and another comma minus one. And what this is gonna do, same exact program, I just did it saying 24, now it says a, a decrement, okay? I turned this also into a decrement, uh, a reverse for loop in a way. No, nothing to do with a tooth complement here. This is just a reverse for loop. And down here, I also made this one a reverse for loop. And the funny thing is about this, here's what happens. See how the lights are counting like as if it's a mirror? They count at the other end of the spectrum instead. It's still cor correctly counting. It's still correctly doing everything. It's, okay, and it's not inverted or anything, but I'll even, I can even make it count that way, which I'll show you next. We'll show you what it looks like being inverted as it's counting that way, but you got you can actually make it count from left to right, right to left, just by changing certain values in the for loop. Now we're gonna see what the, 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 the inverse of it looks like. Okay, now what we see here, is I took out the, I, I uh, inverted the thing again with by taking out the, 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 the two's complement. Uh, that's what I still believe it is, even though I made this thing work by accident. But watch the funky result. It'll stay in reverse it'll, and be mirror at the same time. It's still counting the right way, but it's just doing it really, really funky looking. Now I'm going to show you what the sleep does, the sleep weight command does when you actually uh, in, adjust it into the actual for loops themselves. We're going to see these bits go from right to left all the way through that we're going to see the actual natural way the shift register flows. Its actual nature is really going from right to left, not left to right. Uh, I think I read something about universal shift registers that can do both, but I only got one that can go with from right to left shift. But uh, this ain't what it's really doing, that's why these lights blink in between. I wish I had transistors on every one, but I don't have enough. It would have cut the flashes of the of the light bulbs. But this is how it's gonna look when I uh, do the in, when I do the last uh, example to show you here. But first of all, we're gonna go stop. Cause I, I'm just gonna stop it like that. I didn't use control C, so the lights are still on. So that's a bad idea, but I'm gonna, I only got one guy with the camera anyway, and that's me. So I'm gonna be re rebooting the program anyway. But just give me a minute and we'll do, we'll show you the other one. Okay, by changing the sleep value for the, to uh, 0.05, I've, and what I also had done, I also put the sleep as weight commands inside the loop. They're not outside the loop like they were before. They're inside the loop. They're in they're within the for loops, okay? Now you're gonna watch how this behaves. Now I, I had to make it uh, faster too, so the leads would actually hurry up and count. So 
See that? That's actually counting in binary. It's still counting in binary, but that's the that's the true nature of the shift register. It's actually going from right to left. Without the sleep commands or anything like that, that'd be going like the blink of an eye. You wouldn't realize that it even counted that. It didn't even pushed that far. But that's like watching it in slow motion. That's what the actual shift register is doing by nature. But because it's all three of them, it's acting like one big one. It's acting like one real big one. But it's kind of an ugly way if you want to look at binary numbers, right? Because you wouldn't be able to tell that it was counted in binary, but it act, it's actually counting in binary no matter what. But this can't go reverse. Uh, it, it, <laughs> I wish it could. It'd be nice. But yeah, it can only make things look like they're going reverse. But in the true nature of the shift registers, that's how it acts. But you should write down this program if you can, or you get it off GitHub because if you have a Raspberry Pi, you're gonna do a lot with this little neat little example I showed you. You can make the binary digits look more fun and just let them go crazy all day and see how many days it'll take to count up to 16,777,000. And what did I say, 216? Yeah, that'd be a lot to count up to. But I don't know, someone should try this program out and, and uh, use the point, use the the, the, the weight, the, the sleep as point, the sleep point five, um, you know, half a second, or even a little bit lesser than half a second, and see how many days it'll run, or do a mathematical calculation on how many days it'll run, how, how many microseconds you need for maybe a day and a half. Because I imagine with the way I got it, it'd probably take at least three or four days to keep running. In fact, I might even do a video on that. And uh, before I close, there's a few more things I want to mention about uh, the last video. Before I end this series with the shift register, I am going to do the clock segment again. I'm going to definitely do that. I mean, that, I mean that, the 24-bit seg segment. I'm going to definitely uh, do that again, that segment I couldn't get to work. Uh, I'll show you in a few seconds. Okay. You actually remember this little guy here? This little guy I couldn't make work? Well, I'm still going to work on him. And it'll probably be the last shift register video I do in a while. But this guy here, I'll be definitely working on him to make this thing actually do the proper counting sequence instead of just making the segments come on and counting one by one by one. I still haven't quite figured this puppy out. But we're going to try. That's all I can do is try, but that'll be in one of the shift register videos I come up with, but it'll probably be the last shift register video I do for a while because I put a lot of work into what I did so far and I kind of want to take a holiday from this and try other things with it, but um, I will definitely be getting back to this and I want to thank anybody that, anybody that was on YouTube that watched the other video, the last video I did. I want to thank them very much for giving me all the kinds of views that they gave me even though I keep my comments turned off because it just makes it easier for me just to go about my day. I don't do anything to get likes or, or anything like that. I just do it to help people and hope that things work and make people ponder and wonder a bit. That's all I want to do and I thank all the YouTubers out there who helped me achieve all this. I wouldn't have done it without Mosh or Corey or GoPro or Pro, uh, uh, a guy named Bro, Bro Code. I wouldn't have done it without his help or anything. I think a lot of them out there who helped me achieve Python programming and those like the Pi guy who helped me do my Raspberry Pi and even though he don't know me, they taught me a lot. I hope they see the video. I owe them a great debt of gratitude. All of them. And I really hope that this video helps a lot of people that want to make this kind of binary stuff. Because it's really fascinating once you get going. It's truly fascinating. Okay, what I did here is, even though I got 24 LEDs, what I did was I made it be an 8-bit number. And what I did though, and to the actual thing, to clear the bits, it's still at 24, to make them all off. But watch this. See how you got that 8 right there? Now watch this. See all three different sets of shift registers come on, but they're all, you got a time and delay each. 
Isn't that neat? Three eight bit strip registers are now separate strip registers. And all three of them will count up to two fifty five or two fifty six. I can like an 8-bit number instead of a 24-bit number. But this lets you know that these shift registers are actually not really independent of each other. If you're going to do something that's 8 bits, you got to unhook some of the two other shift registers from their, from their, from the leads. That way you can actually get one, only one to work if you want. But that's what it kind of looks like. And I hope you all had fun. I really hope you enjoyed this video. See you again soon.